Hey, my name is Thomas and today's video is about the history of the key rangefinder cameras made in Ukraine. But as you will find out in a minute, it's also about the history of the Zeiss Econ rangefinder cameras made in the 1930s. So without further ado, let's dive in. Kiev cameras uh, were designed in Germany. Uh, so the history actually starts in the 1930s uh, with a Zeiss uh, factory. Zeiss was the biggest optical maybe company of the world at the time, or let's say the most uh, advanced one. Um, and uh, their rival was Leica, of course. Leica, they had introduced the first 35 millimeter film camera in 1925 and around 1930, they had introduced the screw mount, the M39 screw mount. So the Leica also became the very first ever 35 millimeter film interchangeable lens system camera, as we would call it today. And um, Zeiss, their camera business was the brand Zeiss Econ at the time. They had a huge amount of various cameras, but they wanted something to compete with the Leica. So they came up with the contacts. And the goal was to uh, design and develop a camera that was every bit as good as the Leica and would beat it in every single respect. Uh, that was quite a broad goal, uh, so they went with everything they could do. They, uh, Ludwig Bertele, the famous optician, was uh, responsible for designing all the interchangeable optics for the contacts and they were first class, super, super famous designs, um, like the 85mm f2, 50mm f2, 50mm f1.5, etc. Uh, you can say that the Zeiss optics are for the contacts camera were indeed better, more sharp, more contrasty than their Leica counterparts at the time overall. And um, the camera itself was also a rangefinder camera. It had a bayonet mount instead of a screw mount, uh, more modern. Um, it had a very complex bayonet mount, by the way, uh, internal bayonet uh, for the 50mm lenses uh, with this famous small uh, thumb wheel to focus and then external bayonet more standard uh, for any other focal length. And it had a vertical traveling all metal shutter uh, that uh, reached a top speed of 1 over 1250th of a second. Uh, in reality, it maybe was more than one over one thousandth of a second, but nonetheless, it was faster as the Leica and also offered slow times down to half of a second. So Leica responded already in 1933 with a Model 3. They added slow times to their cameras as well. And in 1935, they added one over one thousandth of a second also to the Leica range. So you saw there was a race going on already. The big problem of the Contax Model 1, the original one was, it was really very unreliable. So Zeiss uh, had tried out a lot of new technologies at the time, but they weren't really <laughs> up front of things. The cameras had a lot of problems. They were uh, internally modified all the time throughout the production. And finally, in 1936, they uh, sort of came up with a second camera. It was the Contax 2, completely redesigned also body-wise. And this camera also brought a much better viewfinder, uh, a combined viewfinder and rangefinder that was unheard of at the time, another first for Zeiss Econ. And that camera, the Contax 2, that is basically the Kiev. By the way, there was a Contax 2 and a Contax 3, but they came both in 1936. The Contax 3 only added uh, a light meter that was built on top of the camera. Uh, it wasn't really connected to the shutter speed dial or anything. It was just like uh, an external light meter that was fixed to the camera. Um, otherwise, they were identical. So, uh, the Contax 2 and Contax 3 were uh, produced until around 1945. Uh, during the Second World War, cameras were needed by the military for various purposes and also for the journalists of the time. So both Leica and Zeiss uh, produced cameras throughout the war. But after the war, of course, production uh, came to a halt. And now starts the history of the Kiev camera. Uh, 
So before we start with that, let's have a look what is the situation of the Soviet Union's camera industry after 1945. So um, the Soviets already in 1932 started to copy Leica cameras. Um, they just took the, uh, the Leica II, which was the the original Leica screw mount system camera with a rangefinder and uh, they just copied those cameras. Back at the time it wasn't really legal to do that but for the Soviet uh, domestic market they just didn't care. Uh, those cameras were never meant to be uh, exported to any other country so just a copy of the Leica camera and uh, two factories were starting to produce those cameras in the 1930s and that was of course the Tsoki uh, close to Moscow and the Fed uh, which is also located in uh, Ukraine. And those cameras were made, everyone knows them, also throughout the 1950s, 60s and 70s with a lot of modifications, but all based on the original Leica screw mount copy. And um, the Kiev is a completely different story. So what happened in 1945 after the war was, of course, all the German patents uh, were now free to use for everyone. And there was a lot of uh, war um, reparation going on. Uh, Americans, Russians and everyone else was looking to uh, transfer technology from Germany to their countries. Uh, famous Operation Paperclip, of course, uh, led to the moon landing. Uh, Werner von Braun and, and other Germans were invited to America, which led to the moon rocket. And on a much, much smaller scale, uh, the Soviet government decided we want to have another world-class leading camera industry in our country. Let's uh, take the Zeiss Econ contacts and uh, transfer all the tooling and all the machinery and also some experts to set up a production uh, line in Kiev at the Arsenal Zabot, the Arsenal factory. Uh, the Arsenal factory in itself uh, is a very historic big uh, uh, enterprise. I think it started in 1761 already and they were producing mainly products for military use. So they were kind of used to precision thinking and high quality manufacturing and that was the plant that was uh, selected by the Soviets and all the size tooling for the context cameras was transferred to there. So that process already started in late 1945. However, by the time all the tools had been transferred to Kiev, a lot of damage had happened during transport. Um, and also a lot of the stuff was already damaged before in, uh, during the war. So um, in Zeiss, at the Zeiss original headquarters in Jena, they also produced new tooling to replace everything that was broken. Uh, and that new stuff was also transferred to Kiev. And also some of the stuff, the executive stuff, uh, went to Kiev um, for a couple of years uh, to help set up the new production in Kiev. So the early Kiev cameras, they were called Kiev 2 and Kiev 3. They were completely, they were not just copies of the size context, they were the real thing. Produced on the same tooling, and uh, also some of the workforce was from Germany. So an early Kiev two or three camera is any bit as good as a contacts camera. And in 1945, 46, 47, it was really a class leading camera still. Um, the production was ramped up in the 1950s. And at that time also, of course, the internationally, uh, there was a lot of new camera developments. 36 already saw the exacta, but it took until around 1950, until that thing was really kind of uh, brought up to date with uh, prism finders and stuff. There was the Zeiss Jena, uh, uh, Contax D, the Mirror Contax, um, SLR camera, the first ever with a prism finder. So you saw in the late 1940s, early 1950s, SLR cameras coming into uh, existence. Also the famous Praktina uh, from 1952, class leading camera. Uh, some other efforts like the Rectaflex from Italy in 1948, I think. So just after the war, uh, peacetime production, uh, yeah, production for peacetime goods uh, picked up again and developed. And in 1954 came the Leica M3, of course, the definite rangefinder camera. And by that point, at last, uh, the Contax 2 uh, or the Kiev 2 was just a dated old thing. But for the Soviet domestic market, that maybe didn't matter so much. So that camera just remained into production. And um, 
development, yeah. There was one real development. Uh, in 1969, they, there came the Kiev 5. So after the 2 and the 3, there was the 4. That's the camera I'm showing you here. Um, but that's just a very, very small cosmetic change. Uh, like uh, that piece uh, on the bottom of the camera is removed that you could put it on a table. Uh, it had a more standard uh, threads for your uh, tripod. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, okay, the, the design of the light meter was a little bit smaller now and the knobs were a bit changed, but nothing really changed. So the Kiev 4 was still like exactly a Kiev 2 or a Kiev 3 with very, very small modifications, a little bit simpler to produce. Uh, the Kiev 5, however, that was a more ambitious change. As you can see, it's a quite bulky, big camera. They still were using the same basic mechanism, but put on a completely new view finder arrangement. It had a life size viewfinder just as the Leica M3. Uh, it's got frame lines uh, and also parallax uh, correction. All that was not in the original Kiev uh, 2, 3, 4 or context 2 or 3 designs. So uh, the Kiev 5 was a real try to keep up, yeah, make something that maybe uh, can compete with a Leica M3, but you can clearly see this camera cannot compete with a Leica M3. Uh, production was complex uh, to handle. It was very expensive, also super heavy, and uh, the Key 5 was already phased out by 1973. And now the 1970s also marked the time when uh, production was ramped up even more. But all the quality thinking, uh, yeah, that maybe was uh, inherited by the format size stuff and the size tooling and all that thinking had basically gone. Now it was more about just producing a huge amount of cameras according to their five-year plans and quality really took another hit in the 1970s. And by the time of the 1980s, the Key 4s were still in production, now called uh, Key 4A, uh, Key 4AM. And um, but quality was not that good anymore. So many cameras, there is all these horrible stories of cameras that would leave the factory already in non-working condition, uh, cameras out of alignment, uh, shutters binding and stuff like that. Uh, however, it's still even most of these cameras, uh, at least when they're serviced a little bit, still work very well. So the original context design was actually very good. Otherwise, all these cameras would have been in an even worse state. But um, yeah, the the design from 1930 was a super high precision camera for the time, but it proved to be a, a very durable camera actually, given the circumstances. So that's the history of the Kiev 4 camera, or let's say the Kiev rangefinder cameras. It came to a halt in the late 1980s. By the time, yeah, this camera design was really so outdated. Um, there was Perestroika and Glasnost. Uh, people had to compete with uh, imports from uh, Japan and uh, China. And at that time, yeah, the key for it really didn't make any sense anymore. So that's it for today, the history of the contacts and uh, Kiev rangefinder cameras. In the next video of this small series, I'm going to shoot one of these cameras. I'm going to opt for my size Econ Contax 2 from 1938 because that camera has been serviced recently, so it's more or less working flawlessly. Whereas my Kiev 4 camera never has been serviced in 60 years and it has some issues. Uh, it still works, by the way, but uh, the light seals are not that good, so you get a lot of false light on your film. Uh, I hope you're going to look forward to that episode as well. And as always, if you like this video, then please leave a like. Um, also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And uh, in case that you've got any questions or comments, write something in the comment section below. I uh, always love to read all your comments and I will happily answer every single one of them. So live long and prosper, have a great time, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.